<laughs> Stop whistling. No way. Some people say, I love it when you whistle when you come into a video. I don't know why. People say, oh, it's comforting. Really? <laughs> I'll actually, I found that when I'm in a store and I'm like quietly whistling at a higher pitch, it annoys the hell out of people. <laughs> Which makes me want to do it some more. Uh, I don't really mean that. Uh, one of the uh, key issues that we had today it used to be an issue of sophistry. And uh, sophistry is not a whole lot different than logomachy. Sophistry, of course, is uh, never intending to arrive at the topic, the core, the, the nexus of something being discussed or debated. It's uh, debate for the sake of debate. You know, it's kind of like uh, boxing. You know, boxing. You say it's uh, done for sake of money you know, and for sake of show, but you know uh, now we actually have a different issue, and that's uh, where people will take advantage of the fact that people today uh, have an attention span about the size of a goldfish or a mosquito. And uh, if you're really evil, and there's a whole lot of people that are extremely evil today, there's, uh, and I want to title this video, uh, Glitter and Bull Cookies. There are people that, uh, you ever heard of a drive-by? You know what a drive-by is. If you're not an American, like in a drive-by is you, like you'll drive past someone and you'll shout something, you just keep on rolling, or, you know, a, 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 that's another type of drive-by, which, of course, is purely evil. Um, that uh, people will do a drive-by, and uh, the attention span that, people have they're never interested in the truth you could you could uh, completely ruin somebody or uh, you know completely uh, throw a, a stinker in a room and just vanish and I call this uh, glitter and bull cookies if you're not an American bull cookies are references uh, to uh, um, big uh, steaming stinking piles of uh, bull poop out in the field. Uh, sometimes they're called bull fritters or bull cookies. Uh, glitter is uh, where someone uh, dazzles you with nonsense. They'll come up to your face, not literally, and throw some glitter in your face. Uh, politicians, <clears throat> did I say that word, the P word, are famous for doing that. They'll actually uh, completely abscond with people's uh, belief in something by posting an enormous amount of uh, of lies and filth. But people's attention span is such that once you imprint it on them, they're never interested in a follow-up. So, you know, is this true? Where's the evidence for this? This is what intelligent people do. Um, and when I say intelligentsia, I don't mean academia. I mean people who are actually interested in the facts. The truth is always far deeper than people give it credit for. I mean, you know, uh, the Iraq thing, which is not a thing, you know, that was built on nothing but a bunch of lies. But after X number of years of that, the percentage of people that actually cared what was the justification for it is next to nil. The whole, uh, which I knew from the beginning, and I don't care about politics, okay? So don't, please don't drag in anybody's name and politics here. Just look at the facts. Facts, logic, and wisdom above all else. I don't care if it's the left or the right. It doesn't make any difference to me. I knew the whole Russiagate stuff was complete and total bunk. But all you had to do was just to present the air of it. It's like, hey, you know, I heard that he said, she said, and, and people are so superficially unintelligent, unfortunately, is that it affects everything, but nobody's ever interested in following up on the truth of things. And that's because people are so busy. They have the attention span of a mosquito or a goldfish. And you know that as well as I do. The whole Red Scare stuff, of course, having lived in Russia, knowing the Russians, um, even though they had a huge uh, nuclear uh, array, you know, the whole Red Scare stuff was a complete and total nonsense. Anyway, people are always interested in dividing and conquering, especially those that want power over us. They uh, generate false dragons for us to fear. I mean, when I was young, it was the whole, uh, you know, duck and cover, get, you know, that is just ridiculous. That, of course, went all the way back to the 50s. You know, oh, the Russians. Oh, the evil Russians. Of course, we have a new, a new one, and I won't name that. And that's just to keep people uh, from unifying. Um, but this is not about uh, this video specifically. It's, not, it's definitely not about politics. I don't discuss that. It's actually about uh, being able to discern and see through things. I say and I mean it that if someone can't debate something with ease and simplicity, 
then they don't understand it at all if you can't present the facts, logic, and wisdom. Some things, of course, there is no objective proof thereof, and that is the entire uh, sphere of metaphysics. You can't give objective proof for that which is, by definition, subjective, but you can give uh, logic and wisdom to it and engage in apophotic or retroductive methodology such that is, you know, the highest level of thinking vis-a-vis -vis the Platonists and the Pythagoreans. And uh, being able to abduct, um, abduction is a type of uh, thought process, uh, non-linear, non-conscious thought process, um, you know, the truth of things. So people are not interested in that anymore, and I find that incredibly odd. And, and of course, that's because we live in an iPad generation of anti-intellectualism. People don't want to know things. Um, when's the last time you've heard, and I'm, I know people shouldn't watch, um, some people call it the idiot box or the TV, it doesn't matter what you call it. Um, when's the last time you've heard anybody in your f you know, TV show or news, whatever, and not that I ab advocate watching any news, you know, use the words uh, wisdom and discernment? I mean, I, I bet you can't even think of it. It just is extremely unfortunate. Um, people will lie for years. People who want power over you, they'll lie for years and years and years. And when the truth comes out, well, nobody cares. I mean, a lot of that stuff has happened recently, especially in the United States, but I mean, it's been happening for years and decades. And, uh, and please don't drag politics in, because I, I couldn't care less about that subject at all. I'm only interested in facts, logic, and wisdom. You know, people need to have freedom. They need to be left the hell alone. There is one politician I'll agree with, and he gave a quote, says, the most evil words ever said are, hello, I'm from the government, and I'm here to help you. <laughs> I'm um, seeing a whole lot of uh, horrible, horrible, horrible evil things happening down under. And uh, thousands of Australians have both emailed me and left comments, and I read every single one of them. Um, the thing where people don't ask questions, and I'll give an example. I've seen hundreds of videos of uh, cops in Australia doing horrible things. And uh, the people say, you know, I'm, I'm obeying the law, I'm doing everything. And they, they say, what is your justification for this? What's your reason for it? There is none. If people, you really need to get this through your head. A lot of people don't understand this. They really don't. That if a person backs away or shrinks into the dark, or they refuse to debate or give you valid logical reasons, or at least law, depending on the situation, like, you know, you violated statute, blah, blah, blah. And uh, like, okay, I didn't know that, you know. But if they shrink away and they can't debate it, you know, they'll give no logic or reason for what they do or what they say, then they're to be shunned. I mean, they, they should be rightly so shunned. It's like, you, you know, I'm asking you valid questions. You have no evidence. You have no facts and logic backing you up. You have no, is a great word everybody should learn and say it very, very often. Here's the one magic word that they should have taught you in school, and I use it all the time. Not as much recently, it's because of the fact that I don't debate as much as I used to. I used to debate all the time. Substantiation. You say, well, that's just another word for uh, evidences. Yes and no. You know, what is your evidences for this? Um, there is a t-shirt, I think it was a, a three-point uh, t-shirt uh, quote from Thomas Sowell. I think it's from Thomas Sowell. And uh, the, the three things that you ask is, What's your evidence for this? How much is that going to cost? And I, I forget the third one. Uh, but anyway, substantiation. You know, where's your substantiation for this? You say this, or you made a declaration. What is your evidence for this? And there has to be, of course, an axis of discussion. There has to be a reference. If we're going to, for example, you know, I'll debate uh, the word anada and its actual meaning. It's like, well, we actually have to have a nexus of debating what it is or is not, this one word that all of so-called Buddhism revolves around, anatta. It's like, well, what are we using as the reference? It can't be your teacher, you know, Master Guru Bada Bing. You know, what is the basis by which we may debate this particular word and its definition and contextual usage thereof? And people, you can't nail them down, they're like jello. There's an ancient Pali quote, by the way from uh, Gautama, or what you call the Buddha. Actually, it's Gautama Sakyamuni. Sakyamuni is not a name, by the way. It just means Scythian sage. 
And the quote goes like this, there are people are eel wrigglers. Um, when you, like you're holding an eel, they, when you, you, can't, you can't hold them, pin them down to anything. You know, they're uh, vapid, you know, like a fart in the air. They're like jello, you can't nail them down. Anyway, the quote goes, they're eel wrigglers. When you grab a hold of them, they wiggle to and fro. You can't debate them because they have nothing to stand on. There is no foundation. When people stand on something like principles of freedom, um, you know, their own individual rights, they stand on a foundation that their forefathers died for those freedoms, that it is an inalienable human right. You know, just go read the uh, Declaration of Independence, for example, just on that topic. You know, that is a foundation. It's like you're violating my inalienable rights that my forefathers and uncles died for, you know, fought and died for. And uh, you have no right, therefore, to, you know, A, B, C, X, Y, Z. When you have a foundation and you confront people, and by confront, I just mean formal debate. I'm not meaning this stuff necessitatively. They always fail. They always shrink away. They have no foundation. Their whole belief system is that only. It's just a, a fart in the wind. There is no means by which they can debate you. If a person cannot debate you, then they have no grounds to assert their belief or position upon you. They either don't understand it or they have no grounds by which to do or act upon their radical, insane, illogical, untrue, unwise actions or beliefs in relationship to you or anybody else. Like, you know, what's your substantiation for this? Do you have any evidences for what you're doing? There's no logic behind it. You know, uh, there's no law that lets you do this, depending, of course, what you're debating. People don't learn this stuff in high school and college, and it absolutely ticks me off. Um, people just cannot think clearly and concisely. And it's extremely, you know, like I said it's an iPad generation of uh, anti-intellectualism. I do this in field theory, too. They're, uh, they're so illogical and inconsistent, nothing they can say makes any sense because it's completely senseless. They talk about waves and you point out, like, you know, there's no such thing as a wave. A wave is not what something is. A wave is what something does. Well, lines of force. Well, force is not a thing. Force is what is done upon something else. You know, force of what, by what, and upon what. Force is not a thing. Force is an action. You don't, this isn't force. This is force. You know what I'm doing, but you know, this thing right here, this is not force. This is they are irrational, inconsistent, and illogical. There's no foundational logic behind the things that they assert, and they want to assert things of their insanity upon you. Whether that be people who think they're in power, whether that be people who, you know, uh, want dominance over you, and that's just one of the unfortunate things of human existence is that there's all these um, radically inept and intellectually uh, uh, bereft individuals that are uh, emitting a, a noxious, foul gas of uh, ignorance and stupidity. And of course, it's like blowing in your face, kind of like some sort of, this happened to me once <laughs> in, a, in a Moscow subway, because Russians are generally not fat, and it's probably been eating cabbage all day long. There must have been like some, I don't know who's huge, he's way bigger than me. Russians are generally not fat, uh, however. And this guy let out, let out a you know, a cloud of gas, and you get hear, Rap! oh my gosh, it was just, oh, the whole place was just repulsed, and we were stuck in this tube, you know, going in the subway 40 miles an hour in the, the metro in Moskva, uh, Moscow. This is what these people do, it's just exactly like that fat guy in the train who probably been eating cabbage for the past week nonstop. Shida kasha pisha nasha, yeah, if you speak Russian, you understood what I said. Um, they're eel wrigglers, they have no foundation. There is no substantiation, facts, logic, or wisdom based upon what they say or assert or believe. And once you take that position and you have a foundation, they can't debate you, they can't, uh, they can't do anything to you. You're like the rock of Gibraltar. They always shrink down unless you're some sort of evil despot, you know, that has a giant wooden stick and they want to, you know, do something. That's, of course, something else. And then, of course, you know, the reaction to that is a matter for a topic that I won't discuss since I don't tell anybody else what to do in life. But, uh, yeah, the title of this video is Glitter and Bull Cookies. When people do a drive-by with the glitter, they throw it in your face, 
They lie to you, and it just dazzles people, and they ultimately don't want to know the truth. It's like, oh, I got dazzled with glitter. When the truth comes out, as it always does, and it usually takes between three to five years, especially when horrible things are, uh, you know, put in the minds of the public by, uh, by evil entities. It's like, oh, the truth came out. They were lying the whole time. But nobody cares. To me, that's incredibly important. It's like, ah, oh, the truth finally came out. All this nonsense people have been talking about for years, total lies, total propaganda, it was a smear, it was a total, you know, uh, gaseous uh, cabbage fart in the wind of lies and nonsense. People don't care. Because why? These evil people know that the damage has been done. You know, what they wanted to accomplish has been accomplished. Who cares after three to five years, whatever the case may be, if the truth comes out? This is uh, true uh, by people that want uh, control over you. This is true when it uh, comes to debating matters of metaphysics and doctrine, which I've been doing uh, for decades. They're eel wrigglers. They're sophists. A sophist is never interested in arriving at the truth. They want to debate you for the sake of debate. They'll tell you to shut up. I was like, well, what's your evidence or substantiation for you know, this radical belief uh, which is not grounded in facts logic. Well, no, they don't answer, they tell you to shut up, or they run away. They have no foundation. There is nothing to back them up. People need to be way more aware of that than they are. People are just not. And I just use that one example of the cops down in Australia. People say, what am I doing? I'm not breaking any law. I, I know all the laws. I'm not breaking it. So I don't have to answer you. There will be all these cops. I've seen 100 plus videos like this. The cops will say something. They won't say nothing at all. It's like, I don't, or I've heard this a lot from them. I don't have to answer you. It's like, yeah, you do. You know, if you're going to like, uh, you know, club me over the head and throw me to the ground and make me eat dirt, you better give me logic, facts, and reasons behind that. Of course, you don't have any. And of course, then, of course, we can say you're a despot, you know, there's nothing, what you're doing is illegal, illicit, there's no facts, logic, or wisdom behind it, there's no law behind it. These people never have a foundation because they're not standing any, in anything other than quicksand, lies, and nonsense. And uh, as I call it, glitter and bull cookies. You know, when people do a drive-by and throw glitter in your face, you know, dazzle you with uh, poppycock and nonsense. But the unintelligent people don't care because once the damage has been done and the truth comes out a few years later, nobody cares. It's like, this is important. The truth finally came out. This is what I knew it was all to begin with. All knew it what, what it was to begin with. And I don't care. I've moved on. You know, I don't care about that anymore. I'm like, well, you should care. But people have the attention spans of a mosquito or a goldfish. And that is extremely unfortunate. When big heinous lies are uncovered, people need to be held accountable. But nobody is held accountable anymore in this uh, corrupt world. The world revolves in cycles, of course, right now in the Kali Yuga. The cycles repeat forever and ever and ever for all infinity, even after the world blows away like a fart in the wind. And then there's another world and another guy. It'll be the exact same thing. It will revolve in cycles. This is timeless and unavoidable. And you just write it, or you write it out, or you write it in a cave, or you pull yourself away from it, and you watch it from the, the background shadows while you're eating popcorn. But as long as you're able to recognize the lies and nonsense, and you're able to see through these people, then you can shun them. Because people that actually propagate that stuff, I mean, they are to be shunned. And that's the word the Amish use. Like their kids do something illicit, and they don't believe in the Amish life, and they shun them. I'm actually not one that actually believes in shunning your children for the rest of their life, but I mean, if there's evil or people that don't embrace facts, logic, and wisdom, or they never have any evidence or substantiation for the nonsense that they put on you or make you want to believe, it's like, you know, everything you said is lies and nonsense. I'm going to shun you. I'm going to pretend you don't exist. It's like a child. They're to be seen but not heard. I see you, but I'm never going to listen to you because everything you say is sophistry, it's lies and nonsense. It, uh, it's not factually supported. It's not uh, logical. It's not wise. It's not intelligent uh, also. You know, I will see you out of the corner of my eye to know where you're at, just like a child, but I, you know, I don't listen to you. You know, you have no credibility. You have nothing whatsoever anymore. Anyway, that's a really important thing that kids should learn in high school. 
Not that this is a video for uh, for young folks. It's a video for everybody, honestly. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.